Hello friends, this is Dr. Madhuruma here, your pediatrics faculty at Global Academy of Medical Education. Here I come today with the INSET May 2023 pediatrics recall. Now overall what I got the review from my students, it was a very difficult paper. Uh, pediatrics was doable by the way, uh, but some subjects like uh, preventive and social medicine, pharmacology, there were various tough questions and also pathology. So let us start. A child presents with fever for 6 days with strawberry tongue and peeling of skin, drug of choice for this. So here uh, even if you haven't understood, I mean the question, whatever be the question, uh, what Ames did was that then in one option there was IVIG and there was a bracket before that. So people thought this will be the correct answer and yes this is the correct answer that is the intravenous immunoglobulin because this scenario is of Kawasaki disease. Okay, so what we have, this is the strawberry tongue. See, in Kawasaki disease, already I have told you multiple times, even I have revised this in the final pan series for INSET as well. Whatever question from Kawasaki disease comes in the exam, in any exam, complete Kawasaki, atypical Kawasaki, incomplete Kawasaki, IVIG resistant Kawasaki, the answer will be intravenous immunoglobulin. So intravenous immunoglobulin is given 2 gram per kg within 10 days of onset. Of fever preferably. And also remember that aspirin we give in high dose aspirin. 50 to 80 milligram per kg till the child is afebrile for 48 hours once the child is afebrile for 48 hours we switch to low dose aspirin or the antiplatelet dose of aspirin 3 to 5 milligram per kg so we give an anti-inflammatory dose of aspirin to control the uh, inflammation and the cytokines and with the intravenous immunoglobulin. So what I gathered from this my students is that the history was a child with a fever for 6 days and there were multiple pictures. One showing the peeling of skin or the disquamation, one with the non-purulent conjunctivitis and the other with the Kawasaki disease presentation and the answer is IVIG. So just let's see the picture once more. We know in any Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is a clinical diagnosis and fever is the sign qua non of Kawasaki disease. Along with fever, we have 4 out of 5 cream criteria. Okay, so what is 4 out of 5 cream criteria? So first is C. C is conjunctivitis. So I think you can appreciate that this is limbal sparing. bilateral, non-purulent conjunctivitis. Okay. So after C we have R that is the rash. So this is the classic rash of Kawasaki disease. It is mostly in the abdomen and the trunks but it can occur anywhere on the body. Next coming to E that is in the acute phase of Kawasaki disease we have erythema and the edema of the hand and the feet. So erythema and edema of hand and feet and later on what we have is the disquamation. It can be periungual disquamation, periodal disquamation or the perianal disquamation. So here in this picture you can appreciate the periungual disquamation. Next coming to A, that is the adenopathy. So this is unilateral cervical lymphadenopathy and it is more than 1.5 cm. Remember in a country like India, if you are having bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy, it is tuberculosis unless proved otherwise. And if it is a unilateral cervical lymphadenopathy with fever, with red eyes, red tongue, we need to think about KD. 
and lastly coming to m that is the mucosal changes where you find this strawberry tongue and another differential of strawberry tongue is scarlet fever so fever plus 4 out of 5 cream criteria is classic kawasaki disease if you have 2 or 3 out of this 5 uh, cream criteria then it is incomplete kawasaki disease and if you have a typical organ involvement like pulmonary organ involvement renal organ involvement hepatobiliary organ involvement we call it as atypical kawasaki disease and even after giving ivig also we wait for 36 hours and even after completion of ivig for 36 hours if the fever persists we call it as ivig resistant kawasaki disease and in all these three all these four cases the drug of choice is intravenous immunoglobulin and kawasaki disease is a clinical diagnosis right various supportive laboratory measures are there but they are not used for diagnosis coming to the second question enzyme deficient in pompase disease again this was discussed in my final pun series so pompase disease first thing is that it is glycogen storage disease type 2 number 2 it is lysosomal storage disease Now you already know the what is the enzyme deficient it is acid maltase alpha 1 4 glucosidase okay so here the it actually affects both the skeletal muscles as well as the cardiac muscles so it's a differential diagnosis of a floppy infant we get hypotonia plus cardiomyopathy But the good, it, uh, good news is that the enzyme replacement therapy is available for Pompe's disease. Okay. And if you are seeing an ECG, you can find there is an increased chance of WPW syndrome as well. So these are the five points you need to remember from Pompe's disease. Coming to question number 3, it's a very favorite question or topic of AIMS. Again, I revised this in my fun, final pun series. That is the question about cystic fibrosis. CFTR gene acts on which channel? So it is the chloride channel. So we are dealing with nothing but cystic fibrosis. So it is autosomal recessive. So what is the chromosome involved? It is chromosome 7Q and let me tell you what is the most common mutation. It is the type 3 is the most common mutation. It is phenylalanine 508 deletion. Right and what is the most common post newborn screening test? It is the sweat chloride test where the value is more than equal to 60 is positive. And in the newborn screening test what happens? It is immunoreactive trypsinogen assay. The earliest sign is bronchiolitis. In the newborn, we get some history of meconium ileus, etc. In an older age group, we get the history of steatoria and malabsorption and failure to thrive. New drug for Rett syndrome. This is a bit difficult question because we knew the everything about Rett syndrome, but we, we are not sure about the drug. Why? Because this is a very newly approved drug, FD approved drug. In March 2023, trifinitide and uh, trophinitide, sorry, and trophinitide, what trophinitide does, it relieves the symptoms, relieves the symptoms of Rett syndrome. Why? Because it's an analog of glypromet. Analog of gripromet. So, what are the points you should remember from Red syndrome? Number one, it's X linked dominant inheritance. So, mainly the females are affected. Males can be affected if they are having Klinefelter syndrome. It is a neuroregression disorder which presents with acquired microcephaly. So what happens, you know, the child uh, is normal at birth, then the child attains the normal developmental milestones and just from 
12 months of age the child is having some regression of milestones mainly the language and the motor and then the child will have ataxia there will be acquired microcephaly and seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures but what differentiates red syndrome from other neuroregression syndromes is that this seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures are responsive to treatment and another thing which you get in your paper multiple times stereotypic hand wringing movements and some repeated blows on the forehead okay turner mosaic should not be further evaluated with so that is you should know what are the complications or what things can happen in a turner mosaic child then only you can understand that which can is not useful so i have told you any syndromes you will have a cardiac association so turner to ho gai ha so turner the echo we need so because turner syndrome i have repeated many times we have bicuspid aortic valve and coarctation of aorta next coming to audiometry all the syndromes they have some problem with the eye and some problem with the ears so again audiometry is necessary and they also have a chance uh, of developing diabetes so you need evaluation for diabetes you need evaluation for hearing you need evaluation for cardiac but you do not need evaluation for autoimmune disorders so anti nuclear antibody will be the answer and i heard that uh, in medicine there was one question regarding the pattern of ana most probably the answer was speckled pattern uh, according to the picture so again anti nuclear antibody is a very hot shot for your exam so be prepared regarding all sorts of ana before you sit for your november aims coming to question number 6 a child went to temple with grandmother returns crying taken to hospital breathless bp is 150 by 90 with sweating cold skin capillary refill time is 3 seconds respiratory rate 30 to what to give so i am not very sure about the symptomatology uh, everybody told me that the child went to the temple with grandmother and returned home crying so first of all let me tell you there was one thing that was there in the question many Uh, people told that there was priapism and there was two questions in einset paper on priapism one was like priapism is the side effect of which anti psychiatric drug the answer was trazodone and another was here that is there was some uh, poison which caused priapism right but i am not sure whether this priapism was not there here or not so i didn't incorporate in the question itself so features like autonomic storm with priapism the answer will be prazosin because it is nothing but a scorpion sting bite so if what happens we give prazosin what is prazosin it is a post synaptic alpha 1 blocker we give 30 microgram per kg per dose and we know what happens here there is autonomic instability in a scorpion sting we can have sympathetic nervous system stimulation which will result in tachycardia hypertension etc and we can have parasympathetic stimulation later also which will result in sweating hypotension later on so there are various stages of uh, prazosin poisoning what happens in stage 1 you get only pain what happens in stage 2 you get hypertension priapism sweating i think this is the picture only that was given in our paper in the third grade we have shock tachycardia and fourth is there is hypotension tachycardia so these are the four grades of scorpion bite and the drug of choice is prazosin apart from supportive treatment okay So coming to question number 7 a 10 week child came for vaccination previous history of inconsolable crying and fever more than 40 degrees celsius at 6 weeks vaccination what to do now So we understood 6 weeks there was one vaccine which was given to the child and then the child had fever and inconsolable crying So now it is also mentioned in the question that DPT was given So now whether to give DPT or not that is one issue and number 2 
whether to give DT. Now let me tell you here you will give DPT. Why? Because inconsolable crying and fever in the previous episode is not a contraindication for giving for the dose of vaccine. But if the question mentioned seizures, then you will not give DPT, you will give DT because it is because of the pertussis component of DPT vaccine, right? Coming to a very important question on congenital heart disease, the NADA's minor criteria has been asked. So abnormal S2, this is correct. Abnormal BP, this is correct. Diastolic murmur is wrong because this is a major criteria and this is also wrong that is because systolic murmur grade 3 is also a major criteria. So A and B are the correct option to this question. So these are, let us see the NADA's criteria. The major criteria includes systolic grade murmur, grade 3 or more, diastolic murmur, cyanosis and congenital heart and congestive heart failure, CCF. Whereas the minor criteria includes systolic murmur less than grade 3, abnormal S2, abnormal ECG, abnormal chest x-ray and abnormal BP. So this is a multiple option correct type of question. I am not sure about this question but people told me there was one question on thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and plasma exchange transfusion was there. So, uh, so you know that what is TTP? So I would like you to uh, please comment in the comment box regarding this question so that I can uh, answer you back. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura so what are the clinical features of TTP you will get kidney injury acute kidney injury you will get thrombocytopenia as the name suggest you will get microangiopathic hemolytic anemia In any microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, what do you get in the peripheral blood smear? Cystocytes, right? You also get some CNS symptoms and fever. So this is the pentart of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Either there is Adam TS 13 deficiency or there are some antibodies against Adam TS 13. So whatever be the cause of Adam TS 13 is deficient. Either it is congenitally deficient or some antibodies are there which are against Adam TS 13. And this reduces the breakdown of multimers of one relevant factor. Okay. So what happens here? That's why what is the ideal treatment for TTP? The ideal treatment is plasma pheresis or plasma exchange transfusion, right? Followed by you can give corticosteroids and rituximab. It is a B cell depleter anti CD20. Okay. Association with this include, so can you see the chicks of the child? This is nothing but the slapped chick appearance, okay? And we know that the most common virus associated with slapped chick appearance is parvovirus B19. And parvovirus B19 is associated with pure red cell aplasia. So remember parvovirus B19 is the fifth disease. You get arthralgia also. Erythema infectiosum. What about sixth disease? It is HSV6. Right? Roseola infantum. Now parvovirus B19 is the common cause of fetal anemia. So when a newborn is born with unexplained anemia, we need to think about parvovirus B19. It is also one of the very important causes of non-immune hydrops vitalis. Okay, so slap chick appearance is parvovirus B19. Pure red cell aplasia. Calculate anion gap. So this is a numerical. You just need to know the formula. That is minus chloride 
plus bicarb we don't consider potassium so sodium is 145 minus chloride 90 and bicarb is 20 so 145 minus 110 so coming around 35 if the values are correct i don't know so this is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis that we are dealing with okay so you just need to know the formula of the plasma anion gap non immune hydroxyphetalis are all except so most common cause of non immune hydroxyphetalis is cardiac hypoplastic left heart syndrome others followed by the other causes followed by idiopathic followed by chromosomal there is noonan syndrome as well followed by there is hematological causes right so chromosomal anomalies is right parvovirus b19 is a right heart failure is a right abo incompatibility is a cause of immune hydrops vitalis so immune hydrops vitalis we have abo and rh incompatibility so this will be the answer so hydrops vitalis is when there is fluid in more than two compartments right we'll have ascites increased skin fold thickness pleural effusion pericardial effusion and ascites Placentomegaly and polyhydramnios are very important associations of hydrops fetalis, right? It can be divided into two broad categories, immune hydrops fetalis and non-immune hydrops fetalis. Among immune hydrops fetalis, we have ABO and RH incompatibility and non-immune, the most common cause is cardiac followed by idiopathic and chromosomal. So chromosomal, parvovirus B19 and heart failure all are non-immune causes of hydrops fetalis which is not a complication of parenteral nutrition so this is a child who is intubated where you can see the subclavian line and through the subclavian line the uh, total parenteral nutrition the child is receiving okay so any complication of tpn can be broadly categorized into three uh, broad groups one is metabolic where we can have hypoglycemia hyperglycemia metabolic bone disease etc next is catheter related and third is sepsis so catheter related we have pneumothorax refeeding syndrome is again because of low phosphate osteoporosis again metabolic complication of tpn aspiration no way is a complication of parenteral nutrition so this will be the answer again i'm not sure about this question patient has absent cd40 on b cells so uh, somehow i said uh, people loves this hyper IgM syndrome because uh, two years back there was one question of flow cytometry two or three years flow cytometry where there was also CD40 and CD ligand a uh, CD40 ligand interaction was given and you need to understand that uh, what was the problem the answer was hyper IgM syndrome okay so this hyper IgM syndrome is because of defective class switch recombination And there is a mutation in CD40 ligand. In T cells. So there is recurrent bacterial infections. The treatment is giving IVIG monthly. What are the laboratory parameters that you need to remember that there is normal or increased IgM with all the other immunoglobulins are low that is decreased IgG, IgA and IgE. And you need to remember another thing also that there is low memory CD27 cells. So again I would like you all to comment regarding the options of this question as well also but i think the a will be the answer that is all the immunoglobulins low but high igm okay perinatal infections except the answer will be rubella because rubella is the most notorious congenital torch group of infection which affect the first trimester not perinatal so perinatal will have cytomegalovirus parvovirus and herpes okay not rubella i don't know whether it was some people say it's not herpes it's hepatitis b but the answer will be rubella only match the following regarding the syndromes and the uh, trisomies and all so it's a basically question of genetics the edward syndrome long name so long 
trisomy 18 patau is trisomy 13 sickle cell anemia it is a, qual a qualitative disorder or qualitative hemoglobinopathy where at a in the beta globin chain at the sixth position glutamine is replaced by valine and huntington's chorea it's a trinucleotide repeat sequence defect autosomal dominant in inheritance we have a cag repeat again this question i don't know whether it is about maximum incubation period seen in or match the following whatever uh, i have matched i've tried to match the following from the options that was recollected chicken pox is 10 days hepatitis a 50 days syphilis ranges from 9 to 90 days so this will have the maximum incubation period covid varies between 2 to 14 days the median incubation period is 3 days so 2 to 14 days is covid exact option what was given i have no clue coming to question number 18 features of iron deficiency anemia again a very important topic for INE set so there is increased total iron binding capacity this is true decreased ferritin again true decreased transferrin saturation this is true and decreased iron this is also true uh, so all are correct the option was uh, arranged in a manner like a plus b plus c plus d or a plus b like this so all four are correct regarding iron deficiency anemia not a complication of massive blood transfusion so again this is a very easy question but you need to remember the definition of massive blood transfusion okay so it's a 10 units prbc transfusion within a 24 hour period and the most important complication include number one acidosis number two hypothermia number three is coagulopathy and number four definitely electrolyte imbalances so hypothermia is a correct option hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia are also correct option but it is not hypokalemia rather it is hyperkalemia so this is the correct option coming to question number uh, next question so this is a bone marrow image it is uh, showing the crumpled tissue paper appearance of nothing but it is the gotcha's disease right so this is crumpled tissue paper appearance and it's a lysosomal disease lysosomal storage disorder So can you appreciate the crumpled tissue paper appearance of this cell, the gotcha cell, okay? And what are the things that you get? There is a deficiency of beta glucocerebrosidase. So deficiency of beta glucocerebrosidase, right? So, but, is, uh, but what is the most important thing again regarding Gotcha's disease? We have enzyme replacement therapy and uh, substrate reduction therapy. Both are available for Gotcha's disease. So, enzyme replacement therapy and substrate reduction therapy are available for Gotcha's disease. We'll have anemia, thrombocytopenia, hepatosplenomegaly as well as there will be neurological features. There are various types of Gotcha's disease. So all this will get and there can be uh, neurological symptoms as well. Bone fractures, bone infarcts will be there. So in the if you find a uh, question where history is given, you will be given hepatosplenomegaly. Plus anemia and thrombocytopenia or a pancytopenia picture. Along with that, there is neurological symptoms. Along with that, you will also get uh, involvement of bone. So, bone fractures and infarcts are going to be there. Okay. SRY gene is located on. So, name only suggesting that short arm of Y chromosome. There was one question on uh, DSD as well, disorder of sexual development. 
uh, again i need the complete recall of that question next question a child with skin lesions hypothyroidism increased uptake in the skull bones and humerus diagnosis and this uh, people told me there was an x-ray of hip showing femur so you can find the sclerotic lesions in the right side of the femur so this is a mccune albright syndrome why because there is caffeolite macules according to the skin lesion i think macules hypothyroidism so endocrinopathy usually a trial of precocious puberty and polyostotic fibrous dysplasia okay so this three makes up what is known as the mccune albright syndrome coming to true about meconium stained neonate so again this question i need a proper recall so there was one question on meconium stained neonate so what we do in a meconium stained baby after delivery it is definitely it's a high risk thing meconium stained liquor so we go and attend it after attending rather every delivery is attended by a pediatrician or a neonatologist but there is nothing additional we do in case of a meconium stained baby because we only assess whether the baby is vigorous or not vigorous means there is a good tone the baby is crying and the heart rate is more than 100 and if none of this three or any one of this three features is absent we call it as a non vigorous mycostent baby so in a case of a vigorous mycostent baby we need we need to do nothing we just need to observe so intrapartum suction is never done it's done for uh, it's it's never done that that means it's not only done for it's uh, it's not that it is done for any other pregnancy okay tracheal suction previously it was done but in the nrp last edition tracheal suction is not done okay so if the none will be the option here what is correct none of the above is true so in meconium stain only we are conscious about whether the baby is vigorous or not and there is no role of tracheal suctioning or gastric lavage in case of a meconium stained baby okay so that finishes the recall of pediatrics 2023 uh please comment in the comment box if there are any other questions i'll help you out and if uh, the questions which i didn't receive all the options so do comment about them also hope this was useful thank you